Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a patient who presented with abdominal pain, including right lower quadrant pain, and vomiting. I'll give you a chance to look over the axial images and get an overview of what we have here. Okay, and then back up just to look again a little more carefully now that you know that there's some abnormalities here. But, but before we get into the abnormalities, I want to go through our standard list of items to check, and that includes the liver, spleen, and pancreas. So I look at the liver. Then I scroll through the spleen right here and the pancreas. Here's pancreas here. Curves around like that, and the head. Here's the uncinate process. Liver, spleen, and pancreas appear okay. The gallbladder is surgically absent. The patient has had a cholecystectomy. We see surgical clips in the anticipated position of the gallbladder. So the gallbladder has been removed. The adrenal glands, let's look at the adrenal glands. This kind of looks like that upside down Y. This one also kind of an upside down Y, but thin limbs of the adrenal gland, no masses. And kidneys, let's see how the kidneys look. The right kidney, the left kidney, all look fine. The abdominal aorta is normally caliber and lung windows appeared unremarkable here too. Okay, uh, let's see, the bowel. So how does the bowel look? Let's take a look. We see an abnormality clearly. Where is its epicenter? Where is the most prominent part of that abnormality? And how will we begin describing this? Well, there is mucosal edema that's involving segments of small bowel distally. So here you can see some mildly dilated loops of small bowel, more proximally, but distally you see that they're a little dilated, but also with very significant amount of edema in the wall. Okay. Here's another little segment. So you have this segment here. This looks like it's terminal ileum because it comes into the very location of where the ileocecal valve would be. The appendix would be coming off somewhere around here. And I think it actually is coming off around there. So here is the ileocecal valve region. We go down from there inferiorly and we find this little structure here. Here, this is small bowel. This is cecum with thickened wall and there's a little nubbin of something. You can barely make it out and you couldn't see it if all you had to look at was this one image. But following it and tracking it, you see something there, here, and even most clearly here. Here you see a little viscous, a little contrast containing structure and here you see it even more clearly. So this, these images here are showing us that this looks like an appendix, appendix. And if we follow it down, instead of going the other way, which we just did, you can see that it kind of comes into the tip of the cecal region here. And we know that that's the inferior tip of the inferomedial tip of the cecum because we can see this structure here, which looks like, looks like the uh, ileocecal valve. So the appendix is here and if we follow it up from the bottom going up again, a little bit higher, now you see air and it, you've lost the anatomy of the appendix there. You don't see a clear appendix. And then in this area you get a fluid collection. So that suggests that this is an appendicitis with perforation. And I think what we have then is an appendicitis with perforation 
and it's caused an abscess. So this is a pus-filled cavity that's embedded right in the mesentery. And because of that, the secondary effect of this perforated appendix with abscess is that the bowel loops that are next to this abscess, which include particularly the terminal ileum, are very edematous. So the terminal ileum is very edematous and thickened, and so is the ileocecal valve. But also, this small bowel loop, more to the left of the appendix, and more to the left of that abscess cavity, is thickened as well. You see wall thickening of this loop of bowel. So why then do we have these dilated loops of bowel that don't have thickened wall? Well, these walls in this distal small bowel, particularly here in the terminal ileum and around the ileocecal valve, this edema has produced an obstruction and therefore there's a backup of pressure. And so this is a partial obstruction of the small bowel due to a perforated appendix. Appendicitis with perforation producing an, an extraluminal fluid collection, presumably an abscess, and that inciting edema, particularly in the terminal ileum and ileocecal valve region, causing a backup of pressure and therefore a partial small bowel obstruction. Here is what we call the root of the mesentery, and you can see it looks a little hazy in here. We don't have the nice, clear, black fat, low attenuation fat, with the enhancing vessels. So we have this stranding in here, and that's edema reflecting the inflammation in the, in the mesentery from that perforated appendix. Let's look at it in the coronal plane. This is, this is relatively gratifying, a little bit more clear than some of the axial images, partly because we can see very nicely here the ileocecal valve. The ileocecal valve is right here, and that's where the terminal ileum comes in. Uh, we've, here's the appendix. We can see it more lengthwise now, as opposed to the, on the axial images. Here is that little fluid pocket that presumably is reflecting the perforation of the appendix, in this case of appendicitis, and likely representing an early abscess formation. You see all the haziness in the adjacent fat. That's edema. If you look over here, you have low attenuation, very dark fat that is not involved. And this gray haziness that we see here is edema in the mesentery near this perforated appendix. This is a nice depiction of the duodenal sweep. Let's, here's the stomach, gastric antrum, the pylorus would be in here somewhere. And then here's the, there's a, I don't see a, no, this is probably duodenal bulb right here. And then that turns into the second portion of the duodenum, third portion of the duodenum, and then the fourth portion goes up a little bit, and then you're into the jejunum. These nice markings that we see here. Here we have the superior mesenteric vein coming from the mesentery. You have the splenic vein coming from the spleen, the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein together form the portal vein, which goes into the liver. So this then is a fairly dramatic case of appendicitis with perforation, a mesenteric abscess producing edema that caused edema in the, in the adjacent jejunum, which in turn narrowed the lumen of the jejunum sufficiently to cause a 
partial small bowel obstruction and dilatation of small bowel loops proximal to that. All right, that's all for now.